Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new Let's Play on Hero Universals 4 Mandate of Heaven Ming version. I don't really know what it is. And we are going to be playing, of course, as Ming. So we're going to get immediately into this because I don't trust my computer for a fucking second when it comes to this part of the map. We'll figure out if it's going to be a cunt the second it gets in the map. Because if it is, well, we know. But if not, we can go through all the brilliant new things introduced in the Mandate of Heaven by the Paradox Development Team, who are fucking amazing enough to give me a copy of this game. So, uh, immediately looking at this, nothing looks too out of diff- uh, Well, too different. Other- No, oh yeah, calm. That's new. Yu Sang, that's different. Uh, there's a few- There's a few different discrepancies in between the old and new. Which is good. I mean, I like new things. Um... I don't really see too many new um, uh, things on the map in particular. I can't, don't see too many new factions. Then again, it has been such a while since I've been in this region that um, there could, there's probably a host of new things, uh, but I just don't notice them. I, know, I do know the Ashkaga Shogun, Shogun is a, um, a new thing. Let's just quickly open all this. Let's move that up. Right, so first thing we're going to look at is Discover Age of Discovery. Because there are ages now in EU4, and EU4... I think this is something that we needed a long time ago, but I, I would never have known how to do this, and I am so glad that they've just they figured it out, and it looks brilliant. Now, there are four ages, I believe. Uh, Age of Discovery, Ref uh, Reformation, Absolution, and Revolutions. Um, now, I believe that is the exact way it goes. Um, there are various things about this that we, uh, we can do. There are obviously... Um, there are these modifiers where we... Um, if we do it... I don't know if we... I think I think everything we do, we get uh, to... I think we get, like, Splendor. And we spend Splendor... Yeah, we spend Splendor on here. Um, and there's other stuff that comes with it. So, these are all the ones. We currently have Control, Center of Trade, and a large city. Uh, all the other ones are not um, available for us, to us yet. But, um, yeah. So, we can then spend, uh, spend Splendor on uh, areas of this. And we can also start Gold Age. Which uh, just does really good stuff for us. Uh, so we'll get more into this when we need to. At the moment, uh, we don't really need anything. There's nothing special about this for us. I mean, I think I think it's Age of Absolution that's special for us. Uh, yeah, Age of Absolution. So until then, we're not really going to be too interested in this. But what we are going to be interested in is the Empire of China. Now, we have uh, the meritocracy of 99. Goes down by 1.9 every year. Uh, training in China, where make sure he doesn't go down by two. Uh, we can ex we also have ver six degrees and decrees and ten tributaries. Now, being the emperor of China or emperor of China, may make the following diplomatic actions: establish tributary. Being the emperor of China gives the following benefits: bonus from high mandate, uh, uses meritoc uh, meritocracy mechanics, can enact centralization, uh, centralization decree decisions, permanent claims on China. Uh, Causes spell to unite China can enforce tributary on no neighbors. We also have the central reforms, which require us to have a mandate, uh, a level of certain level of mandate, which is here. Uh, we gain mandate from having loads of tributaries, and eventually we get to do all these. Uh, the first one um, is uh, gives us yearly meritocracy, uh, meritocracy. The next gains trade efficiency, then just other interesting things. Um, so, Kai, uh, oh, shit, I can't say, uh, Zhu is the Emperor of China, and, uh, we can only decree, act one decree at a time, so let's look at the decrees, start, expand palace bureaucracy, uh, which gives us cheaper development and core cost, uh, conduct pump population census, national tax modifier, promote naval officers, ship durability, increase tariff control, provincial trade power modifier, uh, improve defense, fort defense, and, Boost the officer core infantry combat ability. So this is very, in very great things. So I think the first thing I'm going to be focusing on is an actually a degree, a decree, not a degree. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the conduct population census. It cost us 20 meritocracy and give us a following effect for 10 years. That's fine with me. So now, do we gain meritocracy? No, we have to get some more merit. We have to uh, get some more. A different way. I don't know that that way is yet, but we'll figure it out. We will figure it out. Now, meritocracy seems it replaces a le uh, le uh, what is it? The legitimacy. Now we have got quite a lot of provinces to confer, which we'll uh, do eventually. Now, Confucianism's now got harmony. We've got low harmony, which uh, will uh, 
give us uh, problems. We have High Harmony, which gives us torments with Three Faiths, and we can harmonize with religions. We are currently harmonizing with Mayahana. Um, I don't know how many we can harmonize with. Um, promises with harmonized religions are tolerant as if they were Confucian. Country is following any of your harmonized religions will view you as though you are following that religion. So, pagan don't give a back. Let's have a look at the religion map mode and we can figure out what we want. Well, it'd be very easy to get this lot under my control. Uh, through the Empire of China. Now, one thing I wanted to look up is if there is a... Uh, oh, there's a Devastation map mode, which there is some Devastation, but not too much at the moment. We'll go into that later. Uh, does not look like there's an Empire of China map mode, which I didn't think there would be, but I was just inter I was interested. Um, See, so yeah, I think what we're going to do is we're going to harmonize the religion... Uh, Firdeva, I think it is. Yeah, and we're going to we're going to use that to conquer down there. While harmonizing harmony will harmonize, harmony will decrease with three per year. Harmonization will be finished on January 1478. When harmonized, promises with fear ever will be tolerant as if they're Confucian. So we're gonna basically try and oh, didn't mean to play anywhere then. So we are gonna try and get rid of the uh, uh, animist religion. Now, Eprazu is currently very shit. He's a one one one. Uh, so we are. We, uh, we're going to probably have to hire some people. We do, um... Are, we are a celestial empire, so we gain yearly prestige and... Embracement of, uh... Institutions are very good. Um, so that's unfortunate. Do diplomacy. We don't really need to do any diplomacy yet. But we'll work for we'll work that in a minute. So in, at the moment, we're making 25 gold. Um, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. We have, uh, very low manpower, though. So that's something we need to worry about. And it looks like most of our money is coming from trade. So we're going to have to get that sorted. Uh, let's have a look at this. We currently have in not we have embraced feudalism, but not the Renaissance because it's not 50, 1450. Uh, tech is fine. Ideas again, we don't need to worry about too much. The ideas I think for the mo are the most part the same. Uh, we'll find out if they're not. Now here, our map reserves definitely do need to recover, but we do. I like I like you know we'll go for map reserves to cover, so it will stop me from wanting to kill more. And constructing the Forbidden City is definitely going to be one of the things we need to do. Because, well, we need, we need the Forbidden City. It's just, it's, we can't be China without our Forbidden City. So there's an unguarded nomadic frontiers, which is definitely new. So we're going to have to deal with that. Um, religion, we've been over. Uh, I don't think I talked about the fact that we tolerate heretics and our admin tech is cheaper. Uh, but there we go. Uh, we've got Asian long spear infantry and East Asian archers. Now this is, looks way better now. We've, it looks it's uh, just it looks cleaner here. Apart from there's emptiness there, it looks clean. Now everyone we make a tributary. This is the important one. It becomes a state in which we can demand stuff. We can demand manpower, bestow them gifts upon them, and whatnot. And they have a liberty desire, so we do have to worry about that. And we can demand additional tribute, demand artifacts, grant them promises, pay off debts, and send additional troops to them. Um, but at the moment, uh, we're not going to do any of that. But we are, I think we're going to start, so we can bestow some gifts upon uh, Korea. Uh, Karadel. Ayahaya. Lanzing. Kema. And Die of Yet. Because I want them under 20%. Now, I don't know if they help us in war, but at the moment we're currently demanding ducats. Which I, uh, I'm not going to do. I'm going to... Uh, I think with the people who have the least manpower, like Rook, we're going to demand m manpower from these three. Uh, is that yearly? Yeah, so 300 men yearly. That's much better than three ducats. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, go for, for half money, half manpower. And for now, we'll just uh, we'll not worry about that. Um, we'll make sure they're all offensive. I don't know if they help us in war, but we'll, we'll find out. Uh, and now we've got estates. We've got the Qing Wangs, who we can call the, basically our nobles, the Shangbang, which are the uh, merchants, and the Shizu, which are basically our simple, um, uh, what's it called? Uh, our noble, uh, not nobles, but our um, uh, clergy. So let's get our trade going now. So where is the most profitable to trade? It is uh, in uh, the uh, Hangzhou region. So let's do that. 
Now we currently have, how many men do we have? We have 70 out of 94. Now that means we do need to get, as soon as we can, some barracks. And luckily, hail Paradox, the mighty gods of everything. They have finally added in a ledger, a ledger type deal. Where it's going to make my life much simpler. Because it means I can finally do what I want. And not think, oh, well, which is the best. I can simply just say, sort by improvements. And it will tell me who is best. Like, if we go into temple. I think it, it will always sort to the highest at the top and the lowest at the bottom. Paradox, you guys are fucking brilliant. Thank you. You took your fucking sweet time. But I'm glad you got it there eventually. And we're going to leave our forts up if we're currently making 25 ducats. But we're also going to hire some people. And also, China's got some nice, cool pictures. I don't know when these were added. These are pretty sure these were added with Mandate of Heaven. Uh, but then again, I, 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 have I haven't played China for such a long time. Because I've been waiting for a reason to play as someone like China. China is extremely powerful. And I wanted a reason to play as them. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is immediately establish some tribute areas. And Khan, I'm going to immediately ask you to be a tribute area. Uh, you stang, and we're going to ask you to be one. And, uh, you guys already are. Out the higher is. So we'll make, uh, we'll make you, no, yeah, we'll make you one. So that's my first move. Uh, I'm going to move my armies uh, to the frontiers of whatever. Actually, I'm going to leave my armies where they are. I don't need them many other places. So let's um, go to free speed. Now this let's play will entirely be played on free speed. And they all accept it to be a tributary state. Now, I'm going to try and keep these guys, uh, my tributary states, happy with me. Because I, feel, I don't see a reason why we shouldn't make them happy with us. We are, we may be the great emperor of um, Ming, but I see no reason not uh, having some royal marriages with the more powerful of the uh, our vassals, or tributaries. So... If we go, if we saw them by Mampa, Ayahaya and Lanzang are going to be the other two we have royal marriages with. Now, we're going to do this to uh, solidify our better vassals. And then we're going to improve relations and that's how we're going to, we're going to keep them in like that. We're going to improve two relations at once. Now, Japan, you're all under the Ashikaga Shogunate. I cannot establish a tribute because he has subjects of his own. A lot of them. Now, we do have to worry about the uh, the uh, tribes to the north, the Manchu tribes. I think they're all, uh, which, uh, yeah, they're all steppy nomads, so. Uh, Jin Zhao declared war on Yeren, uh, which is fine. Just don't get in my way, and we'll, uh, we'll be fine. Now, if I wanted to say something, oh, thank God, they've, they've elongated this, finally. It doesn't look like my uh, my uh, tributaries count as an alliance. Or as a vassal who would help me in war. So that's unfortunate. Uh, we're going to have to uh, find ourselves some alliances. Um, Japan, at the moment, does not want to ally with us. So we're going to improve relations with them. So it looks like we're going to be basically improving relations with everyone at the moment. Now, of course, I'm going to constantly just accept income. Now, you can also do voluntarily declare bankruptcy now. Which is amazing. I mean, I don't... Also, sometimes I don't see the point. But, it, I mean, it, it can be used pretty well. We are, unfortunately, still going down. Which means we do need a few more tributaries. Uh, so, while I think about it, we should probably immediately get rid, get as many tributaries as we can. So, I'm going to stop the uh, ideas there. And let's, we're going to use this map mode to just figure out where we haven't got any. And the hordes are uh, declare doing what hordes do best. They're declaring war. You are currently under Ahaya, so it means you're basically a part of me anyway. Pegu does not want to be one of my tributaries, but you do. Congratulations, you guys are all tributaries of mine now. Now, I'm going to try and get us up to... So we're actually, we're able to uh, reform our um, imperial uh, imperialness. Now, as this is adding no adding no problems to me, like this is not adding any uh, relations, uh, not causing me any problems, I'm going to keep going until I like nobody else will. I hire declared war on our tributary state. Uh, I, I guess I can't really do anything about that, can I? 
so, okay. This is, I feel like this is going to be the problem. We, we have to accept that our tributaries are going to fight. So we need to make sure we gain as much of them as possible so we can keep gaining the um, tributaries. Yeah, I can't make you guys tributary. Apparently... Okay. Uh, ah, Mongolia is a vassal under the Oriat. That explains everything. Let's make you guys our tributary. And you... So at the moment, we're just basically working our way around, finding as many uh, tributaries as we can make, and making them tributaries. Now, why do you not want to be a tributary? You have 44 development, so you've decided that you don't want to be. But Lacquer is a very good, smart person. He's been a tributary, and you are currently under Ida Hyas. So that's fine. You two just decide you don't want to be a tributary because distance between borders. That is understandable. I will let you off. Bengal? No. Koch? Yes, there we go. Now, basically, we want to get everyone over here because why not? Uh, well, mostly because we need them to improve our um, mandate. So let's get that going. Okay. Now, the jerkins can be made into tributaries. But um, we'll probably have to do it a bit more forcefully. You have a hostile attitude toward me? Uh, so, I have permanent claims over Ch China, it says. So, I think what we're going to do is we're going to actually take out the Jerkin tribes. I don't want to keep them. They are... Uh, historically, they destroyed China. And in, and in the sense destroyed, I mean they destroyed the actual Chinese empire and uh, became their own... They formed their own empire on China. Um... So, because of that, I don't actually want to give the uh, AI any chance to um, getting my way at this point. I'm going to probably try and keep them underneath me. And probably just destroy them outright. And that'll probably be my kind of first move. But I think, well, like I said, I'm going to wait for my manpower to reserve, uh, reserve to rise first. They are very important for us, so I'm going to let that happen. Again, if I can establish any more tributaries further in here, I can... Jarkland, so we're going to. Now, hopefully, I can um, uh, keep them, uh, what's it called, grow and use them over there. Like, I can defend my uh, people I've made into my tributaries, and that way, they don't. I don't just make them my tributaries, like, they actually are my tributaries. Like, I don't have to. Like, I can defend them, I can look after them, I can help them. Um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, what's this? The strategist, strategic decision after Zheng He's journey. Around 1400, China's relations with the world, outside world began to change. Under the Yuan Dynasty, China had made contact with the West by reopening the old Silk Routes and bringing Muslim, Christian, and Jewish traders to China. The expulsion of the Mongols in 1367 and the seizure of power by Ming, by the Ming, reversed the process that they were that they were trying China. That were tying China more strongly to the outside. Following the seven expeditions, 1405 to 1433, of Admiral Zheng He, who sailed the Imperial Fleet to the Indian Ocean and to the coast of Africa, China folded in on itself and closed off its exter internal external connections. So, point-wise, uh, I mean, military-wise, Barracks is at level six. So, I think as long as we can uh, dis uh, display military dominance, I think we'll be fine. So, we're going to go for outward expansion. That's what we're going to focus on and get ourselves a little bit further towards it. Because it is a lot more important. So that's what we're going to do. So, what do I need to do now? I mean, I've got myself some uh, tributaries. Um, I'm the greatest power in the world, which is unfortunate. But, I mean, Ming has got the biggest changes to it. So, I mean, I'm not going to complain. You just do not like me, so... I may destroy you. You're allied with Jin Sao. So, I'm going to think I'm an ally, I, I, my, ally myself with Hayaxi. And then I'm going to use them to uh, destroy the other guys. Now, I really am interested in whether or not these trivia areas will come to war with me. While I think about it, I do have um, a lot of you guys now. So, let's... Uh, Gonna go with a bit more manpower just to keep myself a little bit happy there. 
Now, have any of you above 25%? No. Uh, so, yeah. So, yeah. We've got our tributaries uh, in order. Um, but unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have to end the first part of the Mandate of Heaven China playthrough here. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I hope you guys will continue to enjoy the series. And I'll see you guys in the next part. See you guys then.